Good morning, everyone. This is Paul Beasley speaking from Dunscoby Head, fur furthest point north, Great Britain. I'm going to attempt over the next two and a half months to walk to the furthest point south, which is Land's End. It's quite calm today here on the coastline, overcast, about nine degrees, but it's okay. It's absolutely beautiful. First, I'd like to thank everyone for their support. And all those who have sponsored me. It is quite emotional. The trail I'm doing down to Inverness is called the John O'Groats Trail. It's uh, it's not a finished trail yet. There's people working on it all the time, putting styles in, putting posters up, posts uh, with that, you know the signs on, putting bridges in. But uh, they want more people to walk it. So I'm here today to try and walk the lot in a seven, in at least six days, seven days. I think I'm going to try and do it in. Uh, I've got a guidebook, it's an unofficial guidebook, but they let me have one, I made a donation and uh, on the understanding I'll make, give some feedback about the trail, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm supposed to do 14 miles today, but I've already done two and a half miles from uh, the last house at John O'Groats to get to Dunscoby Head, so uh, it may be more, but I'm, I am staying tonight at a place called Keys. There isn't a Witherspoon's there, but uh, somewhere I'll, I'll, I'll cope. <laughs> I'm signing off now, here from Dunscoby Head, near John O'Groats. Here I am now, a little bit further on from Dunscoby Head, looking at the stacks of Dunscoby. What a magnificent sight. It's something out of Game, Game of Thrones. It's worth getting out of bed this morning to come and look at these. Hello, not far now till I get to my first accommodation of this challenge. I'm here in Keys. I've nearly clocked 15 miles, just taking me just over 8 hours. The John Roach Trail uh, from Dunscoby Head to here isn't easy. It's in and out all the time. It's not early, but it's in and out, so it does take longer. It's not one to be rushed. It's, uh, lots of tucks, tusks of grass, and a very narrow path, but I didn't have any problem finding my way. Uh, so uh, I'm quite pleased, really, how I feel. I took it nice and steady, took in all the sites. Dunscoby Ed, the uh, stacks of Dunscoby, which are amazing. And then just had a look at Keys Castle, Med medieval castle, marvellous. Right, I'm going to find my accommodation, get cleaned up, and have something to eat, and have a glass of water. Probably. Part of Guinness to go with this as well. See you tomorrow. Good morning. It's Paul Beasley, 2nd of May 2019. Walking from Keys to Wick today. It's overcast, breezy. 
about 4 degrees, but it's okay, it's pleasant. I'm on a beach, it's not too bad, it's quite firm. Uh, <laughs> I passed all the dogs, I went over the dunes, and I've got down the beach now, and uh, I'm going as far as I can on here. And then eventually I reach a, a river called the River West, and I'll have to decide. Well, if, if it dies, then I won't be able to cross it. I have improved on my swimming, uh, but I'm not quite advanced enough to swim across a river going into the sea. So I think I'll walk round. Uh, see you later. Well, here I am at the River West, uh, into the sea. It's not possible at the moment. I like to say I have to do it back. Uh, it's, it's too deep here. Let's have a look. I think it's hard enough. Stones, I can see stones. I think I'm going across here. I don't mind getting my feet wet. That's it. I'm thrashed. Oh. I'm enjoying the walk. the edge. So you have to be careful. Don't look down. Keep your eyes. Just to give you an example of what it looks like. To get here I've had to clamber over a barbed wire fence, it wasn't a styling, it took me a, a while to get over it, but uh, I was advised to uh, look out for a viewing st sticker, to, f to have a look down at the, this arch here. I was wrong earlier, this is the tallest arch, I'm glad it's not ailing this time. Wow, look at that. Well worth coming off the route to come and have a look at this. Get yourself up on this east coast and see some of these wonders of the world.
if that's the last sight I see, well, I can't grumble really, can I? Good evening, everyone. It's been a tough, tough day today. I've had all sorts of hail, snow, thrown at me with high winds. It's been a tough, tough time, especially on those cliff tops. You have to be very, very careful that you don't get blown over the side of the cliff. But uh, I think it's because I'm quite weighty and I've got legs like, like oak beams and big feet. Gives me good, uh, a good grip. But uh, first, set off this morning from uh, Wick on the coastal on the Johnny Broach Trail. Yeah, uh, first to Old Mala. It's not easy, you know, to find your way. Never mind some of the obstacles you have to cross. And then it got terrible. Actually, it's supposed to be seven and a half miles. To the where my, my accommodation is at Leibster. I kept hitting fence after fence after fence, the barbed wire, and there were signs directing me to go over. I just had enough in there and I thought, this is not right. You shouldn't be expected to clamber over a barbed wire fence, especially my age <laughs> or anybody. You know, you could do yourself serious damage, plus the damage to the, the farmer's fence. So I came off onto that road. I, don't, I didn't want to, but I did. And then I did a mile down there. Then I had a silly, silly idea. I thought, oh, I'll try it again. I saw a track leading down by this cemetery, so I had another go. Same again. So I thought, well, what a waste of time and energy. But I should have stopped on the road. Well, I went back to the road, and it was absolutely chucking it down with ale. <laughs> so I was getting battered. And I've got lorries cars you know you've got to be careful on that i don't want to use that road but it was an escape route for me really so i ended up finding me accommodation i hit the jackpot really i mean uh, i asked him where <laughs> where can i go for something to eat he says we'll cook you a dinner we do i he's got a filipino uh, uh partner and she does she cooked me a, a fillet a massive piece of fillet salmon, with, you know, with all the garlic sauces on and the potatoes and vegetables and rice. I chucked a few beers in for £18. I mean, it, it was a feast. And tomorrow I said, uh, I've got the stiffest ch challenge yet. I've, I've set myself a tough section again, 24 and a half miles now. I will come to the road if it's, if it's like today. I mean, I'm not clambering over far wire fences all day. I mean, it's dangerous for me. Uh, so, um, but I'm, I said, I, I, pack me a lunch. I'm going to leave early. I said, what time would you like? He said, my record is 4.30, cooking breakfast. So uh, I said, well, if you can cook me 4.30, I'll, I'll, that'll get me going for five o'clock. So I've got plenty of hours to deal with. I need to get to Elmsdale. I was going to break that journey up and do a nine mile tomorrow initially. I changed my mind because, you know, I don't like wait. I like a good day's walking. I do. I mean, I'm really, you know, it's took it after me today, but I'll be all right with some sleep tonight. But uh, so I'm going to give it a go. I'll give the trail another go. But uh, they want him feedback. They'll get it. I'm condemning that section. I've condemned it anyway. I'm. I'm <laughs> It's just not. You shouldn't be asking people to climb and climb to climb over barbed wire fences. I know the farmers are awkward, and they put the fence right up to where you want to walk. And at times you've got to be brave, really, with this cliff. These cliffs up here. I've seen fantastic things today. I mean, this the C the I neat the C arch. It was unbelievable. That was. I mean, uh, you know, you, it blew me away. That did. Literally, but uh, so hopefully tomorrow. I know it's going to be another tough day, but hopefully I don't know if the weather's going to be improved at all. But uh, 
We'll wait and see. I've not checked yet, but uh, I'll put some more photographs on and uh, I hope you enjoy looking at them and small videos. It's, it, it's uh, you know, it's part of the, it's part and parcel of walking really. But the, I will, it will be nice to walk on a nice path where I don't have to cl climb fences and barbed wire fences and in and out all the time, you know, trying to keep, you know, one side of a cliff and squeezed in between two fences. It's it's not easy walking. It's very slow walking, but uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm just tired. See you tomorrow. Morning. This is Paul Beasley on his fifth day of his Jodel Challenge. I've left Amesdale this morning, heading out to Glossby. I've left behind the cliffs and the barbed wire fences, and now I should have relatively easy walking through to Inverness. I did measure up how many miles I'd actually walked up to yet, I'd done 75 miles. I'm feeling okay, don't worry about me. I'm just in my own methodical pace every day. I don't rush, but I get there eventually. On the, in the book, I should have. 19 and a half miles to do today, but if it's anything to go by with the other sections, they seem to be out. I did more miles, but some of that's fine, fine. Stop. Please go. There's a seal out there. I'm not sure what's it. if it's stuck on a rock. No, it's on a rock. It's sitting on a rock. Yeah. Oh, there's another one. There are six. Oh, there's six altogether, I've been told. One is very far out on the left. Yeah. yeah. It's my first sighting of a seal in Scotland. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can't all of them. Yeah. So we need to go. Anna, come on. Wait a second. <laughs> it's the right weather for seals, raining. Oh, there we are, continuing on the Johnny Roach Trail, the first session out of Elmsdale. It's okay, uh, some difficult vegetation to walk over. It's certainly not the easy option to Inv Inverness, but, uh, you know, it's more interesting. It's easier on my feet. I mean, I, I yes. what can you get better than this? Nice sand to walk on, rather than that tarmac. Heading towards a place, I think it's pronounced Borra, 
borrow something like that but uh, I like to have something to eat there I didn't have any breakfast this morning set off early uh, I've got plenty of food inside me from yesterday so uh, I'm alright I've got some immensely scones in my rucksack what I bought yesterday but look at this magnificent Wow. Good evening everyone. Uh, I've completed 21 more miles of my jogle on the John O'Groach Trail. It wasn't easy. Again, uh, the first section I went down the side of a railway and uh, I had to stick as close to this fence as possible it was rough grass and at one stage it was concrete plinths balancing on those with one hand on the ray on the fence but you know it's <laughs> it's more interesting than walking down that road my shins are still sore from yesterday but uh, it certainly <laughs> You don't see many people using that uh, that trail. M M There's two guys who were doing going in the same direction as me, and they they missed it out. I mean, uh, well, I mean, I ended up going down a beautiful beach. Uh, you know, there was nobody around. It was, you know, it was a wonderful experience being there on my own. I probably could have done a bit of naked sunbathing there. Really, there was nobody around, but it wasn't quite warm enough. Uh, and I couldn't be bothered to take my rucksack off. I mean, thinking about that, I mean, I've been carrying £30 on my back. And it and it, it does slow you down anyway. And, uh, you know, my shoulders are adapting to this. And my back's adapting to this weight. But I'm only carrying basic equipment, what I need. I'm not skimping on any, any clothing, first aid, I've got water, emergency rations. Uh, you know, obviously I've got to have charges for my phone and I've got a torch just in case I don't get back in the daylight. But uh, yeah, it's surprising. The rucksack, it's £30. Is that, that's old money, I mean, I know. You younger ones need go in kilos. Is it 14 kilos? Uh, anyway, I've not had any breakfast because I set off early. And uh, I got to this after about 14 miles called Borough. I went in the town, I went in this pub, said, Is there any chance for a table? She said, No, not to. 45 minutes I said oh I'm sorry I can't wait that long so I ended up I thought I'll go and just sit down on a chair somewhere and a seat somewhere and have a, have a scone what I bought the day before and have a drink of water and carry on about another six miles to Goldsby on the beach and then I I saw this lady walking down the pavement and uh, I said do you know any there's any tea rooms around here she says no and I explained what had happened at the pub and she didn't seem very impressed the pub had let me go out you know she said they moan about not getting custom she said what would you like tea I said that would be lovely thank you what about a sandwich I said well cheese would be nice Cakes? Yeah, okay, I'll have cakes as well. <laughs> so sit, sit, there was some picnic tables outside. So I sat down and waited for her to shout me. <laughs> I went, she shouted me and I went to up and she got the biggest tray of food. She says, we'll take these and then I'll bring the pot of tea. You'll see a photograph of it. It was amazing, actually. I mean, I had a feast. <laughs> Banana, yoghurt. Cakes, cheese sandwiches. It was amazing. I mean, I couldn't thank her enough. I asked her a name. 
I said, Sandra, I said, okay, Sandra, I really appreciate what you've done. She says, no bother, no bother, no bother. Anyway, she says, where are you heading for? I says, Goldsby. I says, where can I eat there? She says, well, I work at the uh, Goldsby Inn on the way in. I says, oh, just mention my name and you'll be okay. <laughs> so uh, off I went, got to my accommodation at Goldsby. And uh, I knocked on the door, rang the bell, no answer. It was raining. It's right outside the train station at Goldsby. And uh, I thought, I checked my, I checked my dates. I thought, oh, I ain't got to probably book wrong date. I'm quite capable of doing that. <laughs> I waited and then I, I just, I just something told me to try the door handle. So I tried the door and it, it opened. I thought, oh, probably just nipped out. And knew I was coming. So I walked in, nobody around, took my boots off, took my rucksack off, w walked into the, kitchen and uh, there was a little scotty dog there barking at me I said hello anybody in no in so I goes upstairs strips off and somebody came in the house I thought oh god I better get some clothes on quick anyway <laughs> this tap on the door and she says did she says I thought he was coming later. I says, no, no. I says, I don't know what time I'm going to get here. It said, depends on, on, on the work, you know, how, what, what obstacles I have to crawl over. <laughs> anyway, uh, she, uh, I had a shower and, uh, oh, what she said, she says to me, they never lock the doors there. She said, we we'll never lock the doors. So I just walked in up the stairs. I was just about to get in the shower when she tapped on the door. Anyway, she took me to the pool and uh, I says, have you got a spare table? Are you staying here? I, I, no, no. I, we don't usually let people. I says, well, I know Sandra. Sandra sent me. Well, she looked at me. She said, okay, then. <laughs> Sat me down and I got saved. I mean, uh, brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I'm all right. I feel I'm tired. It makes you sleepy walking does outside all day. I mean, but uh, I'm all right. I've got 22 miles tomorrow. It's probably be 23 because these guy, this guy, books out completely. I bumped into two more guys doing the John Groats Trail going in the opposite direction. I did warn them what lays ahead, so you know they probably they'll make a decision where whether they. Try and get out. They said they got something to get over from bar by fences. Or I don't know what they bought. Whether they bought a, some sort of mattress or something in the rucksack. But they, they're too high to even think about getting over. So uh, that's it, really. So I'm leaving you now and uh, I'm going to get some sleep. My beard's coming on. You know, I'm not. It's just missing here and there, but. I'm hoping it's going to develop fully over the coming months. Good night. Good morning. This is Paul Beasley. Day six of his jungle challenge. Trying to trying to walk on the Dunner Oaks Trail again. I'm walking from Goldsby to Tain today. It said in the guidebook 22 miles. But if it's on form, I'll be doing at least 23. I've had a lovely breakfast. To be by my house and down. Uh, she didn't have to do this but she's packed me a lunch so uh, thank you very much for that I much appreciate it so prepared for the day ahead on my left I've got a Lynx golf course so potentially I've got a golf ball hazard today 
I put talk out for flying golf balls. I think we've been walking quite a way at signing golf courses today. I am tired, Ed. I've only that three times when I was a minor. I think I was even with helmet on. So, off I go. Climb up this bank from this path down here. I can't see any steps. <laughs> and then uh, I hope there's a nice walkway for pedestrians on that bridge. Here we go. Oh, there's the trusty marker. For the Johnny Brooks Trail. Now, where does it go? <laughs> Don't tell me what plumb of that. My goodness me. I thought I'd done with fencing. Can you believe it? Hey, can you believe this? I've only got to scramble up there to the steps. Ah, oh, dear me. everyone this is Paul Beasley I'll have to check and day seven of his jovial challenge still on <laughs> the Johnny Roach trail I've just left well, I'm just leaving Tain on a beautiful sunny morning just but got to watch this car doesn't kill me I decided to come off the minor road. That would have been the easy option to get to Alnus, but I thought I'd keep on the Johnny Groats Trail. It's further for me, but uh, it's been pleasant walking in the forest. Just me and the wildlife, the birds twittering. And you wouldn't have got this view here. Look like the oil rigs. Uh, I'm not sure what that uh, expanse of water is over there. But uh, it's really peaceful. Good morning, everyone. This is Paul Beasley. Day 8. It's Jogan Challenge. And his last day on the Jenna Groups Trail. Just leaving Holness. I've had a lovely night's sleep in a little Hannix, host to Helena on a Airbnb. It uh, only cost me £15. I didn't get breakfast included with that. Brought to dig a couple of cups of coffee and there was some biscuits so I can't really argue can I oh, thank you Eleanor 
It's where uh, Son usually stays when he visits. So here I am heading out of Alnus on minor roads. I think there's a, a little stretch now of walking against the side of a road, but uh, then across the, the Cromity Bridge, which is uh, not supposed to be very high. And then uh, I'll try and stick to the uh, John Groats Trail through leaving roads as much as possible, going through forestry land. I enjoyed it yesterday. The weather today looks grey and overcast. I think I'm going to get a downpour. But hopefully it won't be when I'm crossing the Keswick Bridge. That leads into Inverness. Because that's one big bridge, I've been told. Uh, I'm not frightened of heights. Having spent a few days <laughs> walking the uh, cliffs of uh, the John Groats Trail, but uh, you know, it would be nice if the weather stayed nice for me to come across there. I'll do a, a a video link for that section um, and then it's into Inverness and the end of the John O'Groats Trail 22 miles today it possibly will be a little bit more so, should have been 15 yesterday and it was 16 but it, you know I'm up to a mile or two so I think then I head towards the youth hostel for my next night's accommodation but unfortunately I'll have to walk by with the spoons so I'll have to drop in there and have a few pint of Guinness and I'm not sure it, well, what the Wednesday club is is it curry somebody will let me know okay good morning I'm just about to cross Cromarty Faith Bridge it's busy road it's not a high bridge, but I've got cars coming by me at speed. So hopefully I'll make it to the other end, and then make it to the next destination. See you later. Here I am on the Cromarty Bridge. Uh, it's not a high bridge, but uh, it is a windy day. I've got a nice way on the right, I've had to cross over, I was on the left, there's not much on that side, so, and it wasn't easy crossing this road, there's lots of cars coming up and down it, so, uh, hopefully I'll be okay on here, on onwards and upwards, there it is, the Kessig Bridge, just about to go over it, I'm running late today, I look they haven't sold out of Guinness, a couple of spoons, it's been a long day, but I'm nearly there. There I go. It's quite a good walkway. I might take my hat off, I don't want that losing that. I hate, I hate cars, I do. John Groves trail to tries to take your roads and it's, it is, takes more time uh, but uh, I prefer being off road here's a cyclist say hello hello anyway I have to concentrate I don't want to fall off at this stage thought I'd stop and take some more shots from the bridge I, uh, I don't know if I'll ever be in this position again, looking out from this bridge. Oh yes, I can see with the spoons. I've got quite high barriers this side. Here I am, on a very sunny morning, outside Inverness Castle. Just about to start my next stage of my Joe walking for Joe. It's Thursday 
9th of May, my ninth day of walking continuously. Previously, I've only walked five days continuously. But I'm okay. I'm uh, standing outside where the Great Glenway starts. There it is. I'm going to set it off in a minute. Uh, I've had a tough eight days walking the Johnny Roach Trail. It's not an easy trail to walk, but uh, I don't regret it. If I if I had a chance again to do it, I'd probably give myself another another day on there to do the cliff sections. You can't do those cliff sections in big chunks. You have to take take your time with those. It takes a lot out of your body. It's not fast walking. It's in and out of geos, a fence, a fence line. I probably got inside the wrong side of the fence a few times. But uh, it's difficult sometimes to uh, judge which side you're supposed to be. Um, it's work in progress with that trail. Um, that's all I can say. I mean, the, it's only been officially started work on it three or four years ago. So, uh, you know, the people who are working are trying to improve it all the time. So it's up to you guys whether doing the jogles or the jobs, whether you incorporate it, dip in and out of it. But, uh, you know, it's well worth the, t the effort if you prepare to put up with the ruggedness of the, of the trail and the obstacles you have to get over. But uh, I've survived. I'm feeling tired today. But I felt like this before when I... Uh, Day after a marathon, all mar most marathons run on a Sunday. And the next day, I got to go back to that pit, doing a shift on days. Could hardly walk after doing Bullock Smithy, Felsman, all these big ultra walks. You know, <laughs> I didn't lay in bed next day thinking, "Oh, I can't get up. I can't move. I've got to get up and get to work." You know, so uh, all I've got to do now is get to my next destination, which is the uh, Drum Not Tradict. I have looked it up on YouTube to see how you say, say that, but uh, I hope I haven't done it in justice, Scotland. I do apologise if I have, but uh, I'm trying my best, but I'm hoping. <laughs> Well, I know for a fact this trail's going to be a doddle compared to what I've just walked. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I haven't got to worry about being hit by a lorry or a car. I haven't got to worry about being crucified by a barbed wire, uh, blown over a cliff. But, uh, no, I'll take each day as it comes. I'll, uh, I'll embrace this one. I'm going somewhere where I've always wanted to go, Loch Ness. So I'll have my camera ready just in case Ness decides to pop his head up above water. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm, I'm going to head off in a minute now and uh, I might have a minute here just on my own, just on a peaceful thought. It's 19 miles. I would think this will be an accurate... 19 miles. Mind you, I probably walked a mile and a half to get here, so from my hostel. But, uh, you know, I've had a nice breakfast there. It's comfortable in the hostel. I think I'm in hostel tonight as well. I am on the Great Glen Way, about nine miles in. We've got the tour of Great Glen coming through. Yeah, well done, lads. Well done. Here we are. You're never far away from a car or a bike. <laughs> oh. 
Here there is another one. I think I can go now. <laughs> Not far Cheers. now. Out of Drum, where I'm staying in an hostel. The locals call it Drum. So, if it's good enough for the locals, it's good enough for Big Paul. There's a castle on that peninsula there. And this is Loch Ness. What an expanse of water. It's enormous. Dark. Sinister. There could be a monster in there. It looks that <laughs> menacing, really. But uh, I'm feeling it. But uh, I'll keep going. I'll be okay. Get these boots off and get some air around my feet, my toes. I'm not really hungry. I had such a feast at the tea shack <laughs> from it was a fantastic place I ate my, my tea bar with a big black pig sitting next to me with cockerels but uh, it was an experience that was I didn't ask her where the toilet was I think it was in hole somewhere in the ground it was a remote place anyway I might speak to you later Good morning everyone, this is Paul Beasley on day 10, there is Joel walking for Jill, second day on the Great Glen Way, the time is 5.46, I was setting off early today, there was no breakfast available at the hostel, but uh, so I just had a coffee I thought I'd better get moving because, according to the guidebook, I've got 22 miles today. I mean, yesterday should have been 19, and I ended up nearly doing 21. I think these guidebooks want rewriting. I'll probably have to do it myself one day. But uh, I'll pick some breakfast up from somewhere. I might find another shacks, tea shack somewhere, hidden away remotely, in, deep in a forest. Anyway, I'm feeling uh, more revitalised after me uh, Loch Ness stout I had last night. I had fish and chips, which has cost me £10. <laughs> it is an expensive place, Loch Ness is. I think it's a lot to do with the, well, drum, drum, not what this, drum, that's what the locals call it, but uh, it's where all the tourists come, that's why, I mean it was four pounds, <laughs> it was it 85 for a pint of Loch Ness Stout, I said, I said to a poor woman, I said, I can't wait to get to Witherspoon's at <laughs> Paul William. She looked at me. Well, never mind. I think she had a little smile. But uh, anyway, I've got to eat. So it was a large fish and chips though. I can't grumble really. So it's looking nice today. But it could change. Scotland's like that. One minute it's sunshine, the next minute it's raining. But uh, I had a little hot spot on my left heel, a crack appearing, so I've put some compede on it and uh, done the other one the same. Uh, yeah. Oh. I'm alright. I'll get there. Goodbye. On my way out now, climbing out of Drum. I'm heading for Fort Augustus. The guidebook says 22 miles, but I'm not, I'm not holding my breath. Speak to you later. I just had to stop here at this spot to admire the view. It's a very calm day here in uh, Scotland on the Great Glenway. 
slight easy mist in the background covering some of the peaks and the hills behind. I did see it. Here I am, 7.36 in the morning, five miles under my belt already, and it's very peaceful, overlooking the Loch Ness. The hills behind, the forests, the mountains, the wind turbines on the horizon. Just climbed up the, the uh, high way up, up to the top of the uh, hillside on that low level, took the high level route. I, I've not seen anybody today ever since I left the drum. People who walk the uh, Great Glen Way usually walk it from uh, Fort William, just have a senior moment then. Fort William through to Inverness. <laughs> and uh, I'm doing it, being a juggler, I'm doing it in, in reverse. So uh, yesterday I saw lots coming towards me, but nobody going my way. <laughs> uh, but uh, it wasn't too bad coming up here. I've got, I think I peaked to the eye sections. High level one, but uh, who knows? It should be shorter, so the book says, but uh, you never know with that book. But it's very peaceful, very calm, and I'm really enjoying today so far. It's nice to have a varied terrain up and down, up and down, so your feet don't get pounded too much in mean, one. Place. The views get better and better. I've got on the high level path and wasn't it worth coming up here? Magnificent. It's no good going to keeping low down on a nice day like this. You've got you're missing so much. Look at that little bit of wall in. A lot of faults in it, but uh, It'll pass. Yes. Well worth the effort coming up here. Absolutely stunning. On the other side. The Great Glen Way now heading towards Fort Augustus. Probably another six miles to do. It's raining. I was hoping it was going to be nice. Took the high level route, it's been a struggle, but uh, I've managed it. I have managed it. I didn't want to miss these views. What a lovely little bridge! Good morning, everyone. That's where I stayed last night in the Airbnb flat. Above the Caledonian Canal Centre. It's a beautiful sunny morning here in Fort Augustus. Here we have the lock, the Caledonian Canal. Quite a spectacular sight. There's the Boffy, I went in there and sampled the real ale last night. Anyway, I'm supposed to be walking to Lagan Lock today. I'm said in the guidebook 11 miles, but I've got a feeling it could be a few more. I'm feeling okay, considering I've walked 203 miles up to yet. 
And this is my 11th day of my juggle walking for Jill. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a nice day. This is a recovery day for me. If, it, if it's 13 mile or if it's 15 mile, it's a recovery day. I'm just going to take it leisurely. I can't get in my hospital till 5 o'clock. So I'm just going to go. I'm not at any breakfast again, so I'll probably have to find some somewhere. But I've got some emergency rations. I've, uh, I've washed my underwear and I've got them hanging up back in my rucksack. The, uh, you have to do these things when you're when you're doing something like I'm doing. <laughs> I've got to keep myself clean and hygienic. They're black, they're blending well with the rucksack so people probably won't notice them. They're quick drying ones anyway. So, here I go. Speak to you later. I to take the time out this morning to come to the head of Loch Ness. Where all the cruisers start from heading down what a beautiful morning it is look at the mist on the water I've met a, a Yorkshire man from <laughs> from Leeds called Ben this morning he took a photograph of me I walked up to him assuming he was English <laughs> He said, I do speak Yorkshire as well. So, uh, there we go. Absolutely amazing sight. Wow. I can't seem to get out of uh, Port Augustus. Look at the size of that boat. My goodness. Waiting to get dropped down into this, to this lock gate. It's enormous. It only does fits. <laughs> and that's come all the way down C Caledonian Canal. My goodness. It's very quiet on this side of the Caledonian Canal. But it, it's nice and wide. So if anybody comes behind me on a bike, there's plenty of room to pass. But there's nobody else around but me again. Now this is what you call a canal. It makes Langley Mill Canal <laughs> look very small. My goodness me. It should be ideal for marathon training on this wood. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, when you see some of the boats coming down here, it's got to be wide, hasn't it? I mean, they're ginormous, some of them are. Oh, what have we here? I've just happened to be walking by on the canal side. We've got a, a floating barge. It's a pub. And I think they own. My look's changing. I actually walked by my youth hostels. I, I did hear a rumour there was a, a floating pub. The inn on the water, it's called. There it is. Well, I'm definitely not. <laughs> When I walk by it, I've come out of my way to get, to go in it and have some food and uh, see what sort of beer they've got. A nice cold pint of Guinness might be just the thing. Good morning, everyone. It's a day twelve. Poor bees is yo walking for jail. It's. Uh, Five past five in the morning. I've got to setting off for my hostel near Lag and Locks. I've got a nice flat stretch to Fort William today along the canal. But I thought I'd get off to a good start because it's approximately 22 and a half, 23 miles, and any more. What, uh, what they might have made a mistake with but uh, yeah it's lovely first thing in the morning you know very quiet looks like it's going to be nice what a time to be out of bed nearly half past five here at Lagging Locks nobody 
But me... And the wildlife on the lake. Look at that mist hanging over the water. It's magical. <laughs> Here I am, about six miles in on the Great Glen Wave from Lagan Locks. Very peaceful, looking beautiful. Birds twittering in the background. Snow on the mountains. There it is. Ben Nevis in front of you. Looks like there's a ski, a chairlift up as well going up the hill below. But what a magnificent mountain. Snow on top. Clear. Good day for it. But it will be cold up there. Be warned, it can be nice and warm below, but up there with snow and winds, it can make it really cold. Johnny Goat's Trail, all is forgiven. <laughs> I've never seen one of these before. A boat, small boats, somewhere in there, all underneath, going through to the lock. Now we're spinning the road round now, so we can get across. Of course it's like the Falkirk wheel, on a smaller version. Well, I've seen everything. Magnificent piece of engineering. <laughs> I should be able to cross in one moment, when those gates open. Let this car in behind me. The boat must be underneath now. Heading for the lock. I've not done any breakfast yet, and I'm feeling a bit peckish. I'm not sure. I've got another ten miles to go. Fort William. Anyway, let it go. Here I am, two mile out of Fort William, just had something to eat, next to Neptune's staircase, long system of locks, what engineering, we have the best engineers in the world, it's quite breezy here today, I'm not, but it was only two miles, there's three, that's the sign I've just passed. There's Ben. I bet it's blowing a gale up there. There's that ski lift on the left. Wow. It's a lovely clear day. Witherspoons here. Good evening everyone, uh, I thought I'd keep you updated about my journey so far, how I feel and of course a beard update, how the beard's going, <laughs> it's in, it's in, uh, it's in the process of getting a really good nice thick beard I think but I need a bit more time. Um, it's a bit thin on this side, the left side, but and it's a bit thicker on this side. I'm not sure why, really. I'll uh, I'll have to try and circulate the cheekbone a bit more in the morning with a bit of massage on the cheek. See if I can get a bit more blood circulated, and it might improve the growth on this left hand side. Anyway, I'm in a fabulous. Uh, <laughs> Fabulous youth hostel in Glen Nevis. Uh, I mean, I finished today down at Fort William and uh, I'd already done 24 miles. I'd just checked my GPS. <laughs> and then I thought I'd walk to the start of the West Island Way. I knew the Witherspoons was there, so I thought, well, I'll have a photograph taken there 
this afternoon and then tomorrow morning I won't have to come back to it because actually I've walked three miles from there to get to my youth hostel and then I saw a sign on my way up to the youth hostel saying uh, West Island Way so I'm not going to walk back right that three miles out of my way to come back again so uh, I've done it anyway I've done it tonight rather than in the morning anyway I'm in a fabulous place it's all been renovated and I've got a fantastic wet room I mean uh, <laughs> it's better than my bathroom it's uh, oh, oh, I want to have a wet room it's even got a seat in I wonder if they thought I was disabled or something but uh, I feel like I am to be honest today after today's walk it's lovely I've sat in, I've sat in this seat I mean it's, it's a lot better than standing up when you're tired and you you know your real legs are aching. I sat there and I, I've had a shower seated. It's marvellous, and it's spacious as well. So uh, you know it's all right. I think it's cost me about fifty five pound for the night. I've not ordered a, a a breakfast in the morning. Like my policy now, my strategy is get off early. You feel a lot fresher in the first thing in the morning. There's nothing got you know nobody's around. You get off, so I've ordered a pack lunch. So, uh, I mean, officially, I've only got 14 miles to do tomorrow, but, you know, <laughs> I want to get gone and get done. And uh, so that's, I feel a lot better than waiting around. And I, I, I'm an early riser anyway. I like to get up early. That's my policy anyway from now on. Get up and go. I mean, sometimes I miss breakfast, but, you know, I think you have I mean, today there was nothing from Lag and Locks through to more or less, well, four mile out of uh, Fort William. Uh, so, you know, I had to wait a long time. I was ready. Uh, my feet. I've got an issue with the left foot underneath the heel pad. I thought it was a blister and uh, it's cracked and it's sore. And uh, I put some... Uh, Padded it up, and uh, I've, I've uh, uh, hopefully it's going to be all right. I've just got to keep an eye on it anyway. Uh, um, so I put, you know, put some antiseptic cream on it and make sure it's okay. But I don't want anybody <laughs> an illusion. It, it's it's hard for me. This is <laughs> I've really had to dig in deep at times. I mean, uh, I've been averaging uh, well twenty. Uh, easily over 20 mile a day I mean I, I didn't really plan for that but the way the guidebooks have been uh, going I mean I've been doing extra miles every day but uh, I'm hanging in there I'm alright but I, 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 don't, I don't want you to think it's easy for me it's not it's really I really have to dig deep I mean uh, when you get these stinging feelings in your ear you know one ear, there's something not right on your foot, and you know, my knee aching, and you know, but I get, you know, I'm all right, but I have to dig in. I don't, you know, <laughs> it's one of those situations. Well, I've been in before on the 100 mile LDW events, it's uh, you get to say 75, 80 miles, and you're really, really having to dig deep. Good morning everyone, it's 6.27, Monday the 13th of May, 13th day of my Jogal challenge, walking for Jill, just setting off from the Glen Nevis Youth Hostel, five star hotel, as far as I'm concerned, how's the rhythm sound this morning Sean, I think we can make a song out of this Tapping of my stick. <laughs> Come on, Steve, get your son on it. I'm sure we've got something going here. Anyway, back to walking. Yeah, it's peaceful, quiet. I mean, this is going to be a short day for me. It was 14 miles from uh, Fort William, and I've walked three miles already, so. Uh, I think I've got to go right, left here. I'll just have a minute here. West Island Way, that's it. This is a private road. 
get up onto the West Island Way. Gonna be a little climbing bowl, but look at this. Oh. <laughs> no, goodness me. No wonder I can't get much of a signal here with these mountains around me. Yeah, there's up there somewhere in the woods, forest rather. The West Island Way beckons me. You've got to get out of bed early. It's so peaceful this time in order. Nobody but me. The sound of a cuckoo. And all the rest of the bird life. Uh, just a little bit higher now on the forestry track. Looking at the mountains. I've seen men from different dandelions on. I'm not sure if that's it over there, not far right. But... As you keep ascending this forestry track, I always stop, turn round, and have a look what's behind me, what I've left behind. I mean, <laughs> you've got to, haven't you, really? It's all right, keep marching ahead and not stopping and looking back. I mean, everything changes within a few metres. Everything looks different. It's surprising. I mean, it doesn't look like there's done a lot of forestry work here. I'm going to be disappearing into the forest in a minute. I've got to take a last shot. I'm standing on top of the wall of the fort. I will find the date when I look back at the glint when I walk back. But wow, what a view, what a view. If ideal for a fort, fend off any intruders. Wow, try not to fall off this bank. There we are in the background, looking out to Fort William. There's my, I think that's my trail down below. I must have walked a mile off here and it's so uphill. But this is it, you can see enemies coming. Get ready, prepare for battle. Hey, I'm standing on the edge of the fort. There's still rocks buried beneath me. I've got to be careful coming over these rocks. I don't want to end up in the bottom. Now, <laughs> it's well worth coming up to have a look at this. And the views, I mean, from it, I mean, they are amazing. What a start to the day. What a start to the day. I hope it continues. Just making my way round. I will look at the plinth take a photograph of it with more information on I just scooted off when I saw Hill Fort I thought oh I'll never be probably be here again so uh, it'll be worth coming up and having a look it's a calm day it was raining and windy I might have to give it a miss but uh, no it's fantastic I'm going to have a minute on here, sit down and take my rucksack off and just savour the views for 10 minutes before I head back down to uh, the West Island Way. Good morning. I'm about six miles in now on the West Island Way. That's, that's definitely Ben. I mean, I've seen it from different animals earlier on. I've seen it from quite a few different animals. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a bend that is. It's quite a pretty surrounding hillside. It's a narrow path now I'm on, not a forested track, which is better. It's still hard and rocky. This is more like it. I like these sort of tracks, narrow tracks, rocky, more scenery. You no know, fells around me, not forests. 
Yeah, it's. Uh, I think I'm. See, yet, I'm enjoying this. But uh, it's early doors yet. It reminds me at late just a little bit walking down here. Just some of the scenery coming into Kinloch, Leaven, where I'll be staying. Quite rough tracks. Not very good if you've got sore feet, but. Here we are today, dropping into Lynn Clock, Lock Leaven. Take me another half an hour, I should imagine, to get down there. Get this bag unloaded in my youth hostel. I'm going to get a drink from somewhere and a, something to eat. Yeah, it looks peaceful. It's hard under the feet, lot of stone. Anybody doing the West Island Way from uh, Glasgow to Fort William, this will be their final stage, what I'm done first on my job, so they might have sore feet by the time they get here. Good morning everyone. This is Paul Beasley. Let me check, I keep forgetting. Day 14. My Joel, working for Jill. Day two on the West Island Way. I'm just leaving Kinloch to leave him. I'm heading towards uh, Glencoe Ski Centre. I might get a ski lesson today. I might have a bit of time. It's not, I think I've only got about 12 miles, but uh, I, did, I wanted to go further today to Bridge of Orkey. But I couldn't get in Bridge of Orkey, so I'll have to shorten this day. And the following day, I've got a biggie. Yeah, Craig Larrick. So, uh, I have to set off really early for that one. That's about 22, 24 miles. But, uh, anyway, this one will be a recovery day again. And then feet up in me, uh, Micro lodge. I'm staying in. I think I have to hire a sleeping bag. <laughs> uh, I've got. I think there's electric sockets in there. Uh, I did stop in a, a cabin last night here, a McDonald's cabin. Uh, it was okay. It's a posh shed, really. That's all. But uh, I did pay for a breakfast this morning. I had, I ate rather posh really. I'm a sort of sophisticated eater. And I had smoked salmon and scrambled eggs. So uh, I'm all ready for the day. Uh, speak to you later. Good morning, I've just paused to, for a bre breath. Uh, this is my view, looking back to Kinloch Leven. It's uh, a stiff climb out there. It's uh, <laughs> there's a pipeline, as you can see, run through the centre of those trees. I I scrambled I across that because my path was blocked. There obviously was a way round it, but uh, I took a quick risk assessment and. Uh, <laughs> I strode across very carefully. Probably shouldn't have done it, but uh, anyway, I'm here. I'm, I'm safe. Yes, it's absolutely stunning t today. It's, oh, it's very warm. I've got myself wrapped up, but uh, I, I can't seem to find me sun cream. I must have mislaid it somewhere. Anyway, I'm keeping well wrapped up. I think the midges are starting coming out because of the heat. I've got some good... Uh, Insect repellent. My view, what I'm looking at this morning at 10 o'clock. Far, about three and a half mile out of Kinloch Leven, heading towards Glencoe Ski Centre and the Devil's Staircase. I don't think that's going to worry me too much. Here I am standing at the top, looking down on the Devil's Staircase into the valley of Glencoe, 
What a magnificent sight. It's absolutely amazing. On level ground now, next to a road. Oops. The mountains are stunning. Really warm today. I think there's a place here, a hotel or something, I can have something to eat and drink before I get to my uh, hall. I'm standing outside the King House Hotel. There's a pond. The uh, bathing is that warm today. I've seen this before. There's deer. I'm basically touching distance away from this deer. Doesn't seem to be too worried about Big Paul. I'm sorry I'm not sharing any food with you. Yeah, they're quite tame. I'm just heading up towards the ski centre. This mountainous terrain blows you away. It's absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. It's there. That's my nice accommodation. Here I am, outside my micro lodge. Yeah, it definitely looks like something from the Hobbits. Well, I've never seen anything like it. It's like a sauna, like you go at your, your gym. <laughs> you don't need a sleeping bag. I'm going to be roasting in here. That's all I want to lay on. <laughs> it's not even long enough. <laughs> I want to kill my legs <laughs> My goodness. Good morning, everyone. I'm put my glasses on so I can see where I'm walking. It's five o'clock in the morning. Uh, Wednesday, <laughs> 15th of May. My 15th day of my Joel walking for Jill. And my third day on the West Island Way. It's going to be a long day for me today, approximately 24 miles. I'll be out at least 10, 10, between 10 and 12 hours today. It looks like it's going to be a scorcher, so I've changed my hat style for this morning. I've given the train drivers out of rest. He was getting a bit weary, and so uh, yeah, I haven't got my sun cream. So. I'm all right, keeping myself covered up. But, uh, oh, <laughs> my micro hut or hobby hut. Well, it was quite comfortable. I had to use my uh, fleece for a pillow. Uh, I didn't have any sheets or covers. Or... It was warm though. Uh, there's people camping outside. And... One person slept outside on a on a bench. So uh, yeah, for sixty pounds, what more do you want? I filled my water bottles up. Uh, here are all the places I can stop and refresh. Uh, I've got a bite lunch, so uh, I won't go hungry. So I'll speak to you later. Couple of miles in. On a, I'm walking on an old military road, lots of rocks, hard stones. This is my view, what I'm heading for. Still a little bit of snow on top of the peaks. Here, the Invervoran Hotel. I'm eight miles. Out from the ski centre, I stopped at the Invoran Hotel, had a pot of tea, nice piece of chocolate cake and a pint of black and soda. It's going to be an absolute scorcher here today, absolutely scorcher. I should have brought my speedos, really, but never mind, I haven't got any sun cream. <laughs> that would have been a sight for sore eyes, I'm sure. But it's 
Hello, it's uh, I'm climbing out of the flat up over to Bridge of Orkey, two and a half miles away. And from Bridge of Orkey, I've got 13 and a half miles. And what time is it? It's 9.22 in the morning. So it just paid off getting getting walking for five. <laughs> I don't know. See you later. Nearly at the top. Coming from the hotel, Imbagoran Hotel. Let me check on your book. What lot that is? Lock Tuller. Beautiful sight. Again. Climbed off the main path. I'm walking. Lock Tuller. 11 miles done. Set off at 5 o'clock this morning. I'm going to carry on now. I've got 13 and a half miles, more miles to do to get to Crane Larrick. I have the option though, uh, I've been told if things get to, too much for me, I can. It's safe to walk the side of the road, so it might be the best option for me under the circumstances.